My name is Mike Elizalde. I own and operate Spectral Motion Incorporated. We're a company that's dedicated to creating creature and makeup effects for film. I co-founded Spectral Motion with my wife Mary in 1994. The biggest job that we have here is to take a director's vision and put it in front of the camera and have him shoot what he asked for months before. It's a turnkey kind of thing for us where we start from a 2D design concept and we carry it all the way through to the very end uh, where we present it in front of the camera. We worked on films like Hellboy, Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, X-Men The Last Stand, Lady in the Water, and several other features. They helped us primarily conceptualize and execute the thing. And that was our, our biggest challenge of bringing that character to life. And we wanted to do it with a makeup and a practical effect so that we would get the character and the actor inside and the emotion to come through, the acting, and not do it CG. They created the thing for us and of course created him a second time in the, in the sequel. Spectral Motion just was able to take the idea of what Ben Grimm should be and bring it into the new millennium um, and make it look pretty cool. There was a, a big question mark about how are we going to translate the thing that's on the page to the thing that's in front of the camera and not betray the fact that it's a foam latex suit. Mike and his crew were outstanding at making that come alive, making it look real, being true to the comic book, and allowing the actor's face and dynamics to come through the makeup. Well, every single character in Hellboy was uh, a challenge. It was a huge workload with a very limited budget, and everyone who knew the scope of work that we had to create was really amazed at the fact that we did it in such a short time and for such a short budget. A movie in which all the main characters are creatures has to live and die on the quality of its uh, creature effects team. And uh, Spectral Motion delivered in a way that makes it possible to have a star in the movie be a fishman, or a merman, or whatever you want to call it. Ape Sapien is a masterpiece. I think is one of the most beautiful creatures ever committed to film. We created some iconic characters for that movie that became very high profile featured characters. And now we've, we've begun work on Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, also with uh, Guillermo del Toro. They're doing Hellboy, they're doing Ape, they're doing all the supporting monsters, a few little fantastic extras we have. In the first movie, we had about five, six monsters. In this movie, we have over 30-something creatures. On X-Men 3, there was a number of things that um, Spectral was able to do. Primarily, it was about the Beast character and making that character come alive. With Beast, our biggest challenge was to take Kelsey Grammer and take Beast and combine them somehow. You know, Kelsey Grammer is a very articulate gentleman, a, a very, very smart looking guy, which is great because so is Beast. However, Beast is very feral and he's a very sort of primitive looking creature with a very high intellect. So we had to blend these two entities into one and using Kelsey's face as a basis for that was really a great opportunity. We, we were able to come up with a very intelligent looking creature that still retained some of that primal sort of feral characteristic. The other challenges we had were with Juggernaut. We had to make a muscle suit that would be seen bare-chested possibly and make it move and look realistic and yet it had to be a huge augmentation of actor Vinnie Jones's physiognomy. So that presented the challenge of not only making a muscle suit that looks real to the eye and to the camera but also one that moves correctly when he's performing action sequences. Like any company, it's real hard to have a lot of multiple characters in one movie, different sort of you know, artistic and creative uh, standards they have to meet with different characters and then juggling all that with the director. And they did a great job. Our involvement with Lady in the Water was to create some of the dark creatures that lurk in M. Night Shyamalan's imagination. How do you convince people that there's supernatural around you that you don't know about? You look at your grass and you see those mounds in the grass. Well, maybe they're not just mounds in the grass. He came to us to design a character called the Scrunt, 
which is essentially a, a large mythical wolf that's made out of dirt and, and roots and who has grass for fur. So it's a really neat, unique idea. I, I don't get it. I don't get how those guys make those things. They're, it's freaky. It's a beautiful looking thing. And they showed me all this footage of the African wild dogs that they based it on. I mean, the research that goes into getting the exact right like butt movement on the grass wolf. I should do that for a living. It would be really fun. In the case of the scrunt, it was really necessary to make a character that was completely animatronic because the anatomy of this particular character you can't find in nature. There aren't dogs or wolves or any other animals that would fit that exact anatomy. So it would have to be created animatronically from start to finish. We brought in Mark Satrakian, who's helped us many times before to create the animatronics for the scrunt. He created a character that could not only run and walk and emote facially and with his body language give emotion and performance, but he also created a system to control that character that he could adjust on the fly. Anytime a director needs a special makeup effect, any kind of distortion, animatronic creatures, specialty props, we even do digital work, any kind of visual effect that's required, we're equipped to take care of here. If Mike says the creatures are gonna show up and they're gonna be fine, I automatically put it away and I say, it's gonna be fine. And so the spectral is incredibly reliable and I know that when I tell Mike the deadline and he accepts it, he's not going to arrive with an incomplete creature or shuttle it put together or untested. He's gonna come in with a full creature, perfectly tested, and uh, I'm not gonna be wanting for anything. Mike Elizotti and his team over there are talented individuals that as soon as you throw out an idea, they have artists and, and they just go for it. And so working with Spectral is just awesome and I hope I'm able to continue to find projects where I need creatures and I need stuff because um, it's really a pleasure and more of an honor to work with them. Early on in the first um, one of the X-Men's we tested a lot of this stuff and took other companies and tried different things and definitely hands down these guys put together the better looking, better executed, and better priced uh, material. So, yeah, they're they're first on my list when we start putting movies together that need makeup effects. It's got to look real. It's got to behave like something real to help carry you through the story and not distract you to the point where you're no longer engaged. And that's part of our job. As much as we pay such close attention to detail, individual hairs being punched into a character, individual pores being sculpted, irregularities in the skin, that sort of thing, all of that detail that goes into it is in the hopes that people won't notice our work as much, that they'll just assume that it's something realistic and not question it. So we employ all of these tools to sort of try to deceive the psyche into believing that what we've created is real.